Sarah. Hi, I'm Sharon. Hi, I'm Kimberly. Hi, and I'm Nicola. Hello, I'm Nadine. We are Girls Aloud. Girls Aloud exploded onto the pop charts in 2002 following their formation on the hugely successful ITV talent show Pop Stars The Rivals. The girls would go on to achieve massive success with their debut album and single releases, cementing them as one of the UK's biggest and most successful girl groups ever. Taking things back to where it all began, this is Girls Aloud, Sound of the Underground. We got some dancing to do. Girls Aloud was formed on the 30th of November 2002 as part of ITV's pop stars The Rivals. The concept of the program was to produce a boy band and a girl group who would be rivals and compete for the 2002 UK Christmas number one single. Following the initial success of Hearsay, winners of the original pop star show a year prior, several thousand applicants attended auditions across the UK in hope of being selected. Ten girls and ten boys were chosen as finalists by judges Pete Waterman, Louis Walsh and Spice Girl Jerry Halliwell. The five girls who would eventually make it into the group were Cheryl Tweedy, Kimberly Walsh, Nadine Coyle, Sarah Harding and Nicola Roberts. Javine Hilton missed out on a place in the group despite previous expectations that she would be placed in the lineup. The group was named Girls Aloud. The new group competed with the boys' winning group, One True Voice, in a hectic battle to have 2002's Christmas number one single. Girls Aloud won the battle by a landslide with their single, Sound of the Underground. So we're here to talk about Sound of the Underground. This song like transformed pop music in the noughties and it obviously made Girls Aloud from a reality TV girl band into one of the greatest groups pop's witnessed. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> what I find so interesting about it is it was never meant for Girls Aloud in the first place. No, it wasn't. It was actually written, um, well, to give you a little bit of, of background, um, I've been working with Brian since 1997, Brian Higgins. Brian was thinking about what should we do to break a girl group? What sort of song would we need? Let's you know do something sort of out of the box, different. We were really into drum and bass at the time. I was massively into a song called Addicted to Bass that I'd heard a couple of years beforehand in Australia. It was awesome. So Brian gave me loads of backing tracks, like banging drum and bass tracks. Um, and he said, why don't you write with Naira Scarlet? And we went to my house in my basement flat in Lexham Gardens, just off High Street Chem. It's not very sound of the underground, but... Um, <laughs> and we would set up, I think in those days, it might have been like old school dictaphones. And we would write on a number of different tracks. And we would, writing just meant a sort of singing, a stream of consciousness, literally, it's sort of like singing in the shower. Anyway, Sound of the Underground, we put it on and instantly started vibing. Um, and Brian seems to think I had the chorus ready already. I can't remember if I did, but I do remember singing The Wheels on the Bus Go Round. And I was singing, The Wheels on the Bus Go Round, The Wheels on the Bus Go Round. That song just got so much cooler. <laughs> exactly. And then luckily, I think I had Sound of the Underground written down somewhere because I used to just keep a great stack of, of notebooks with lyric ideas. So luckily it changed from uh, the wheels on the bus go around very quickly. And then Nara, Nara and I wrote the verses and unusually we would often write anything up to sort of 60, 70, 80 melodies on one track when you have both of us with our dictaphones dancing around. Um, but on this one we pretty much had those, we had the verse and the, and the pre and then we had the chorus and that was it. And then Brian heard it and got really excited really? about it. And Colin Barlow at college all loved it and said, but we have got this, this show coming up called Pop Stars. And we were like, God, not another reality <laughs> TV show, hilariously, which is in 2002. And obviously we, it felt really saturated already. And they said, we'd love this as the sort of, as, as, the, as the winning single. It was a girl group and a boy group. And we think it's either going to be this or it's going to be Stay by E17, which was like, it's two, two totally different songs. <laughs> 
we went to the, the house where the girls uh, were living. I think there were 10 of them left at that point. Went in, I mean, they were all super, super young. And I remember we played them the record and were like, and they just looked totally <laughs> blankly at us because they were really into their R&B and Mariah Carey and their big ballads. And they were just like, what is this? You were playing us. And so they then came down to the studio and they each recorded it. And then we did a comp of each girl. Uh, and then when it came to the final of the show, Brian was live mixing with Jeremy no Wheatley way. in, I, uh, I can't remember where it was, um, but he was deleting each girl's vocal as they were... On television? Uh, yeah, as they were wow. being thrown off the show. And then we were left with these five, five vocals, which luckily worked really well together. Um, and I think he, they had to finish it that night for the girls to sing on the show the next day. And I think if they probably had gone with something more traditional, I think at that point the boys' numbers for the votes were far, far higher, but it was because it was such a sort of shock sound. So they ended up winning the show, which was good. Making the first video was freezing. It was freezing cold. We started at like five in the morning and finished at like three at night in a dark warehouse with no heating. We were filled all kinds. Doors all over us, all our hands, all over our clothes. Um, Do you know what it is? I just don't think we're all, we're not all into like the sweet pop and we just, we've got attitude, you know what I mean? We're not gonna hide behind a little cheesy pop song and not bring ourselves out kind of thing, you know what I mean? We're letting loose. We are. Sound of the Underground was one of 60 songs that Brian Higgins and Miranda Cooper had written with the aim of launching their own girl group. The song was originally recorded in 2001 by London girl group Orchid, who disbanded before securing a record deal. It was produced by Xenomania and chosen by Girls Aloud's manager Louis Walsh as their debut single. Sound of the Underground became 2002's UK Christmas number one single and spent a further three weeks at the top. The song also reached number one in Ireland and peaked within the top 40 in Australia, Belgium, the Netherlands, Sweden and Switzerland. Following the single's success, Girls Aloud proceeded with recording their debut album. The girls worked with a variety of mostly British musicians and producers, such as Betty Boo and the Beatmasters, who provided three tracks, Graham Stack, Steve Anderson and Tim Kellett. The album's eighth track, Girls Aloud, was co-written by Westlife member Brian McFadden. The girls would also be reunited with Brian Higgins and Xenomania, who would provide six songs for the album. It remains Girls Aloud's only studio album not to be entirely written and produced by Xenomania, who had initially only created two songs for the album, Sound of the Underground and No Good Advice. But when Brian Higgins heard the remaining ten tracks that Girls Aloud had recorded for the album, he promptly called the record label to complain about the lack of creative content. He stated that they needed to get rid of six tracks and he'd replace them. They did just that and allowed the album to stand up as a body of work. This last-minute decision resulted in Girls Aloud returning to the studio to record a further four tracks with Xenomania, Some Kind of Miracle, Life Got Cold, Love Hate and Stop. The album was completed in April 2003. All too aware of pop stars winners Hearsay's rapid decline in popularity after their overnight success, Girls Aloud deliberately held back after the release of Sound of the Underground before releasing new music to ensure that they had a strong enough follow-up single and album.
We woke up this morning at 5 a.m. It's now, I think it's now about half two, three o'clock, and we're only not even halfway there. So I went first. I did my bits, bits to camera first, then Nadine's been, then Kimberly. This is where we have our makeup done and my hair, as you can see. So if you want to come downstairs, I'll take you, I'll take you down on the set and I'll show you. Sarah's got the phone, the phone booth scene. She's going to rock it out in the phone booth. Well, isn't it so mm. far? Really well, everybody's doing really good, aren't we? We've got the dance shots coming up next. So that's going to be good fun. <laughs> we've had about three days to learn, haven't we? We have Easy. three, four days, I think. So we're going to have to just get on with it. Yeah, get on with it. <laughs> A rock chick, full on, like aggression. Yeah. I don't. We've just been doing it for about about forty five minutes now, and it, it's you know you've got to make it a lot bigger, haven't you, for TV? And it's like. <laughs> When Sarah's finished, it's Nicholas turn. I think Nicholas going to actually stand on the bonnet of the car and rock it out on there. And then we've got the dance routine. So we use tambourines. So that's like new, like nobody's done that yet. So we're excited. It's going to be brilliant. It is going to be brilliant. Hunky dory. Five of the vigils kind of like, you know, we're just five young feisty girls and just having fun basically. We don't need no good advice, we don't need any bad press, we don't, we're just having a laugh. It's really not easy, is it? Originally written for Miranda Cooper under the pseudonym Moon Baby, No Good Advice was initially rejected by the members of Girls Aloud as not being their sound. Producer and writer Brian Higgins reportedly then gave Girls Aloud just five minutes to talk about whether or not they wanted to continue working with him. They went away, spoke about it and agreed to proceed. Released on the 12th of May 2003, No Good Advice debuted at number two on the UK singles chart, held off the top spot by R. Kelly's Ignition remix. No Good Advice suffered a similar fate on the Irish singles chart, peaking at number two behind Ireland's Eurovision finalist, Mickey Joe Hart. The song would also peak at number two in Scotland. The song charted in the top 50 in the Netherlands and Belgium, placing at numbers 26 and 45 respectively.
Released on the 23rd of May 2003, the girls' debut album, Sound of the Underground, received generally favourable reviews from music critics and would debut at number two on the UK Albums Chart, just behind Justin Timberlake's debut studio album, Justified. Selling 38,000 copies in its first week, it would eventually go on to be certified platinum for sales of 300,000 copies. In Ireland, the album would peak at number six and at number 20 in Greece. really well that it's a good mix. all together it's a good mix yeah playback it's all over the idea behind the video is i think that basically we're in a kind of new york style setting like a street and the, the diner we're not stuff. actually in new york but unfortunately no, far from it. <laughs> we came to london instead we're running we're running we're running out of time we were just all sort of trying since an early yeah age, i've been dancing too. and singing from little ages and I haven't really, I'm probably the one that's done the least out of everybody. Never ever done any dance lessons or singing or never done stage. I was always different, really. Um, I was probably the show off of the family, if I'm honest. I knew or I kind of hoped that I would end up doing something with it on a larger scale. And here I am now. Mm -hmm. No regrets. <laughs> I've been doing it since I was like four or five, doing bits of television mm -hmm. and musicals and yeah. stuff like that so I've been doing it a long time. We still imagine ourselves as still up and coming and we're just trying and we're just working hard and Yeah we are still up and yeah, still trying to establish ourselves. Oh I, I don't know what I was thinking of that fringe. You don't look bad though, you look really nice. I liked it blonde to it and she started cutting it around it was mm. <laughs> Kimberly looks worried. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your walk, Sarah. Oh no! <laughs> <Hooray>! <laughs> I'm such a oh geezer, man! <laughs> See, I didn't mind these bits and the blue lights and stuff, the moody lights, but I think people preferred us after this having more fun. It's all good having one moody video and then something different, but when you're doing like moody, 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 yeah. people are like, oh god, they take themselves so seriously. Yeah, I know. And we really don't. If they'd but have seen the outtake. I think that for the for the um, point of the song, life got cold. It had to be quite dark and mm. and quite sombre, but we picked it back up, didn't we, for jump? Thank God. I look like I'm about to bust out crying in some of them shots. Mm. Life Got Cold was a late addition to Sound of the Underground, completed by Xenomania shortly before the album's release. The song received attention because of similarities between the guitar riff of the 1995 Oasis hit Wonderwall. Warner Chapel Music later credited Oasis songwriter Noel Gallagher on the song. 
Released on the 18th of August 2003, Life Got Cold was not originally the choice for Girls Aloud's third single. Polydor Records had originally chosen Some Kind of Miracle to be released, but the plan was dropped after an overwhelming fan response to Life Got Cold. The song entered the UK singles chart at number 3. Life Got Cold also debuted at number 3 on the Irish singles chart, but managed to rise to number 2 the following week. It would also peak at number 2 in Scotland and at number 11 in the Netherlands. During the summer of 2003, Girls Aloud would again work with Brian Higgins and Xenomania, recording a further three tracks, a cover version of the Duran Duran hit Girls on Film, which would become a B-side of Life Got Cold, You Freak Me Out for the film Freaky Friday, and a cover version of the Pointer Sisters song Jump for the film Love Actually. They also re-recorded Some Kind of Miracle, which was originally intended to become the fourth single from the album. These four tracks, alongside an altered mix of Life Got Cold, would eventually surface on a reissued version of Sound of the Underground, which was released on the 17th of November 2003. This release only managed to peak at number 42, but is now the only commercial print of the album. We're just running through the verse bridge and chorus again, but it's mainly the chorus bits that will be taken. We were always, always talking about, can we not do a song for a phone? Mm. Can we not always do it and talking to our management and the record company and that? And then this, I think this phone came up and the record company came to us and said, we've been offered this film, blah, 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 blah. it's going to be amazing. So we were really, really overexcited about it. I love coming into the studio because it's a chance for me personally to be able to sing my heart out and not have to worry about an audience. Jump, night, it's something that I'll always look back on my life and think, this has been amazing. Until yeah. it's actually happening, the film's released and we're involved, I don't think we're going to really believe it. Can we ask a compliment? Girls Aloud interview. They're all here in the studio this morning. Don't look so worried. <laughs> I, would, I would have thought the worst is over for you, Cheryl, now. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And presumably you're here today because it's all for one and one for all. You all feel you're in this together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. How has Cheryl been coping with this? Before I ask her, you can tell me. 
It's just been really hard mm. for it. It's just because it's gone on for so long since the start of the year. Um, so it's like she's just she's coped with it really well as mm. under the circumstances because we have yeah. been working so hard. But she got emotional a lot of the time, and but we all just tried to be there for her and, yeah. and help her through just as best as we can. And how important was that for you, Cheryl? Um, I mean, without the support of the girls, I don't think I would have got through it as well as I did, to be honest. Did you think about quitting? Um, I thought about the other girls and what it would do to their chances for the future of the band, but I was never allowed to even think about quitting. No, no, like, no. There's there's no, no way she was going to walk out? Did you really think she was, go she was going to walk out? That was gonna we, be we never even considered no. it, but there's no way that we would have even entertain the idea. <laughs> and you even back, thought of jail, didn't you? I mean, you, you, yeah. you had to consider the prospect yeah, that you I, might end up yeah, in jail. Because of, the, because of the charges I was brought against us, I had to consider that and, and think about the possibility that I could actually go to jail. Well, indeed, you did spend one night, as I understand it, in, in the cell, cells. Yeah. What was that like? It was, it was awful. It was a bit surreal, to be honest. It was like something got out of a movie scene. It, it just didn't seem real that I was in that little cell with a little wooden bench and a little sponge <laughs> mattress. Sponge. Yeah. You seem very humbled by it. You, you came in here this morning to, to sit down on the sofa and you were like a sort of shadow of yourself. You're very sort of... Mm. She's not back to herself yet, anyway. Yeah. She mm. has been for a while. Yeah, now, the thing is that after that night in the cells, when you, when, uh, when you were charged, when you were arrested, first of all, you had to appear on TV the next day. Yeah. Yeah? So how, how difficult was that? Um. You know, like I say, there's four other people in this band. I just had to pick myself up mm. and, and think of those because I didn't want to let anybody down and just get on with it the best I could, really. Pop star was a dream um, for all of you. Did you feel that you had put that in, in jeopardy, jeopardy for the, re for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, definitely. Girls? I mean, I felt, you know, I, I'm sorry to my mum and mm -hmm. to the girls and to the fans. And mm -hmm. So, Cheryl, you've, not, you've been convicted of assault. Yeah. Yeah. And you accept that, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to, you have to um, have this community service, yeah, as part of your yeah. your sentence. How are you going to serve that? What does that involve? Um, you know, I just, I've already started my community service, and I do like six, eight hours a day or whatever. But you know, I'm prepared. That's my punishment, and I'm prepared to do whatever the whatever the they give. come up yeah. with. So at the moment, you don't know what that is. At the moment, I don't know, but I, I can tell you, it's not like the papers have been saying, I won't be singing in old folks' homes or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, but you will do whatever you I'll do whatever, whatever, you, they whatever give, you yeah. give them. The other, the other thing you have to handle, of course, although it was assault that you were convicted of, um, is that um, the, <coughs> these racist <coughs> accusations yeah. that were made at the time. Um, are you worried at all that mud sticks? That was ridiculous for us to like, have to listen to that being said about Cheryl. Yeah. It, was it was just ridiculous thing to, to be said and, and it really did. That was the worst thing that hurt Cheryl. Yeah, and and they were describing her as someone we didn't know her. Totally exactly. yeah. Yeah. But not even because it, like, it was a unanimous verdict. You know, the, the jury in there heard every detail of, the, of that night and they, they knew, you know, it was unanimous. It wasn't even a question. They just said, not guilty. I mean, it, that was ridiculous. It really was. Right, okay. So you ha are you happy you can move on from this? I mean, what have the fans been like? I mean, I suppose the test is you've now got to go back out there, you've the now got to sell more records uh, and concerts and things. The fans have been brilliant. The letters that Cheryl has had have been I mean, really touching words, you know, things that you can tell they've, sat, they've actually sat down and wrote it from the bottom of their heart, you know, and it's we so actually, it's special. Get on. The fan mail don't be sent to our flat, and the most of what we've got at the moment is just off a shelf, <laughs> which, is, which is brilliant. Just packs and packs of stuff. Yeah. Well, when will this get to a stage, Cheryl, where you feel, if you feel you ever can, leave this behind you? Because, I mean, you, we, we can see you're very humbled here this morning. You're obviously not proud of, of what no. went on. Um, but, you know, you've, you, you, you'll, you'll pay your, your sentence. You'll do yeah. what you have to do. Yeah, I mean... Um, I'm getting better as it goes on. It's still a bit raw, I think. It, it's not long since the trial, but I think after that, once, I've, once it's sunk in a bit and I've done my community service, mm. and I'll just put it all behind and, and um, carry on. You know, this sort of experience, you know, fracas and nightclubs and whatever, often are very much part of the image of, of bands and people in, in the pop world and whatever. Um, is, it, is it something in years to come that you shall play on being bad girls or? No. <laughs> no, no, no. People say it when we first started out, that was what they said our image were, like agey bad girls, but 
we're not really, we're not that So if I was a bouncer on a nightclub and the way my career is going, that's quite likely, <laughs> right? And, and you come up to me, on a, be afraid, <laughs> be, very, be very afraid. But do you know, image can make you look like someone completely different to yeah. what you really are. And it is sad to think that people can judge you just by what they see in the yeah. papers or yes. what, they, you know, it is. Really I cool. love your hair, you know, I can't take my eyes. It's really, it's really I'm nice. Yeah. See, that's what you should do. No, Something like that. Yeah, you never say that about yeah. mine, <laughs> do you? So, when are we going to see you back in action? When are you going to have uh, to be singing and dancing and we're talking about better things? Uh, we're, we're coming back. back. Coming back. Our fourth next goes out on the 17th yeah, of November, so oh, it's really exciting. Year? Well, girls, I hope it's a, it's a nice year ahead for you. A lovely Thank Christmas. You. Thank you. And um, Cheryl, I hope um, you can put all this behind you and everything will be Thanks okay. Thanks very much. I appreciate Thank it. You. She's got us. Thank you. She'll be fine. Okay. Is that a relief now? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, they are back next week, actually, performing their new single, Jump. Released on the same day as the album re-release, Jump became the fourth and final single to be lifted off the album. Recorded specifically for the soundtrack to the romantic comedy film Love Actually, the director of Love Actually, Richard Curtis, had phoned Xenomania while they were in a taxi in Berlin to tell them he thought Jump would make a good Girls Aloud single. Girls Aloud's version of Jump was not featured in the film itself, however. Love Actually uses the Pointer Sisters' original version due to international audiences being unaware of Girls Aloud, who featured in the end credits instead. Girls Aloud do, however, appear on the British soundtrack. The single debuted at number two on the UK singles chart. On the Irish singles chart, Jump entered at number two for three consecutive weeks. It also debuted at number two in Scotland. Jump is one of the few Girls Aloud songs that received an international release outside of the UK and Ireland, reaching the top ten in Belgium, the Netherlands and Sweden. You Freak Me Out was considered for an official single release, however, they would decide to move on to recording material for their second studio album instead, this time deciding to work solely with Xenomania and the results would be something truly spectacular. Thanks for watching.